Hello and welcome back to Let's Play a Fire Emblem Path of Radiance with your host Pitmarth Roy. This is going to be a very strange episode because as you can see, uh, normally my file save would not be on the one that we're on, it would be on the one at the very bottom where it says chapter 18, not 17. Because for some reason I recorded the entire episode and after saving it didn't work at all. The file corrupted on both the audio and the video. So I had to start a new game and play all the way to here, so if my stats and characters look a little bit different, then that's why. I used the same characters, but their stats might be a little bit different, levels, weapons, etc. But regardless, we're still going to play through this. After this, I'm going to go back to the one at the bottom, and the stats will go back to normal. So, sorry about that. I was thinking about just not having uh, commentary for this and trying to save the file, but I really do need the commentary for this one, because uh, there is a character later on that speaks in a certain language that, uh, it has a translation online, and long story short, I'm just going to be reading off that translation because you really, really, really don't want to actually try to, you know, translate it yourself. So, apparently we have found a heron. Must be, a. Uh, oh, wait, no, that's not racing. That's somebody else, that's Leanne. And Leanne is actually the person that speaks in this language, as you can see. This is the, uh, old language. We saw this from, uh, Racing a little bit. Not very much, but, you know, just a little bit, so. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, here we go. She says, whatever is this? That's a girl. The only survivor of Heron. And yes, there is another survivor. And she turns. Who are you? And leaves. I must speak. Yeah, stay away, human. And then she faints. And it's all over again. So if Ike is not at level 20, you're probably not going to get him at level 20 at this point, because he's going to be carrying around Leanne. And despite the fact the game will tell you later on that she's extremely light, it still will mess him up quite a bit, as we can see here lowers his speed, or essentially cuts his speed in half and almost cuts his skill in half. So that's not very helpful. So yeah, fortunately my Ike, of course, once again, is up to level 20, so that's not a problem. Um, my stats may look a little bit different. Rolf classed up a little bit later, so he's only level 2 sniper. This is level 18. I am using Titania a little bit, but just in case, you know, like, I need to protect Mist or something, so I'm not actually using her. And I think everybody else is around the same level, so... They are all classed up, so that's always good. So let's go ahead and begin. So what this is, is this is clearly a uh, defense, so you're going to be trying to survive for 10 turns. It's pretty easy to take out all the units, despite the fact there's so many. You'll notice there's a lot of them down here, and most of them will work their way up to you. So right now we want to focus on the top ones, and we'll work on our defense later. So on the first turn, primarily work on just getting rid of the guys at the top. This time when playing through, whenever I uh, found everything except for, I believe, the, uh, I gave one of the uh, angelic robes to Soren, and then I gave the other one to Ike, but most of the other stuff I actually ended up giving to Rolf, you know, like the strength increase, or to Ike, not Rolf, like the strength increase and all that, because, you know, you do need Ike to be a good level when you're playing through this. So go ahead and take out the archer over here. Probably the safest units to keep alive, you know, because you're not going to be able to kill them all in the first turn, obviously. There's just not enough units. Haha, <laughs> no damage, you fool. Would be, uh, keep the axe users alive on the top, because they're pretty bad at being able to hit their targets, so this guy's probably not that big of a threat. I'm going to take him out anyway, though, because I don't think Boyd would be able to take out that Myrmidon. He would probably miss the attack. So... 
the soldiers aren't too much of a threat. It's the Myrmidon might be able to double Ike because his decreased speed. And then also the mages might be a little bit of a threat because Ike doesn't have a great amount of resistance. So let's see if we can take it out. We can. Let's use the Iron Axe, I guess. But yeah, I'm just using Titania for a wall. I'm not using her as, you know, an actual character. Anymore. Interestingly enough, I actually... Uh, forgot to recruit Marcia in that pirate level early on, so whenever I got to chapter 14 with uh, recruiting Malakov, I actually had to kill him. So I don't have Marcia or Malakov, but since I never use him. I've used Marcia once before on easy mode, and she did alright. She could not do a thing until she classed up, though, which she classed up on the uh, desert map for obvious reasons. You can also find ward staffs. Um, this isn't the first one that I got in the chest later on at, at the beginning of the game. You can actually find ward staffs at the uh, beginning of this part, whenever you're still in the shop, before you actually go to the start of this chapter, you can find ward staffs. So if you need mist to do some, like, unnecessary... Instead of unnecessary healing, do just, like, unnecessary resistance bonus. I guess you could always do that. This guy has a strength of 9, the Steel Lancer does 10, that'd be 19 damage minus Miss Defense, which would be 5. Miss does 25 HP, yeah, she'll be fine. He might go for all, for all I know. The enemy can be very strange sometimes. Okay, they can't reach Ike. I'm not worried about this guy at all. Okay, I think we're good. About that guy. Oh, good. He didn't hit missed at all. I'm sure I'm probably going to get this question at some point down the road, or maybe even in this video, for all I know. But you're probably wondering why I keep giving the um, Seraph slash Angelic robe to Ike. The reason I called it Angelic earlier was because that's what it used to be called in the older games. From 7 and 8. Or at least seven. I don't know about eight off the top of my head, but I know seven it was. And that's because since Ike is a uh, technically a lord unit slash required, you know, you have to have him throughout the entire game. I usually try to give him all the stat increase items, especially while he's at level 20 when they can't increase anymore. Because you will have to use him. There is one fight later on in the game. I'm not spoiling it. I know some of you probably already played this game before. But there is a fight later on in the game where... Uh, the only units that you'll be able to use in the fight, it's just one boss, is Ike and Mist. Mist is a healer, Ike is an attacker, obviously, so you want Ike to be really good level. And he will class up at the end of this video. You will see him class up at the end. I'm going to be showing that within this video. Oh, let's go ahead and kill... I might have to kill the silver Titania here. Because I want to form that wall down there. Now, reinforcements will occasionally uh, show up over here, but not too many and not too, uh, till near the end, when it won't really matter anymore. So, we'll just do that. You can also buy night killers and uh, pole axes in the shop, too, for any time, like in stage two of this, which you've already seen, where there's kind of a lot of uh, horseback units. So, if you need to do that, then feel free. do that. I realize he's only a few scores away, but oh well. You'll be able to buy physics staffs near the end of the game, not right off the bat, but I already have one. I think I have another one somewhere as well, so it's not the end of the world. Okay, it's the only unit I moved. Really, I just keep Ike where he is for that entire part. In the fourth one, he'll still be carrying Leanne, and we will have to move him around a little bit because uh, there's a unit that has a ranged spell, which is Meteor. So he's got a ranged uh, fire tome. And also reinforcements show up at the start. Just like they did in the uh, first stage of this part. I should have given Boyd his hand axe. I didn't think of that guy. Oh well. Now you might be thinking, what in the world would you put Soren out there, even though he's in a bush, you know, there's a whole bunch of units that are going to be attacking him. Well, like uh, the other one, I did give him Vantage again, because, you know, the, once again, I always say Soren is a great unit to have Vantage on. But really, you don't have to worry about the mages, because as we've already seen, they're not going to do any damage. Case in point. So the mages aren't a problem at all. 
And as for the other, other units, the Myrmidon, whenever they get hit with Vantage, it'll almost always knock them down to 1 HP or kill them in one hit. And the soldiers usually don't have good accuracy anyway. And a lot of the times, Adept will also activate along with that Vantage. And so with a combination of using Vantage and Adept, they're pretty much going to die before they'll get any a chance to attack. So we'll just use Astra on that guy, because we can. So we're show-offs. Go ahead and kill this mage. And once again, I gave Oscar soul. I kept the uh, skills pretty much the exact same. And that takes care of him. Take up this guy. These class one units pose no threat whatsoever. Very easy to get rid of. Okay, let's see what else we have here. I'm gonna send Rolf down here. I don't care about that healer right now. Well, it's not that big of a deal, so I'm just going to waste another uh, use for the ward staff here. Of course, I guess it's not a complete waste. There are a couple of mages lying around here, so... I mean, there'd be no point in giving it to Soren. They can't do any damage anyway. His resistance is so high. And whenever my unit's classed up, like, you know, Soren, whenever he classes up, you can choose to give him knives or stabs. I chose the same weapons there, so Soren can wield stab. Oscar can wield... I think I gave him bows or swords. But, you know, like I said, I won't be using either one for Oscar, so it doesn't matter anyway. Okay, so we'll just do that. That Elwin's about to run out, but I don't care. We got more of them. Oh, that was just a wind. Well, I still have two Elwins, so that's just fine. Not worried about it at all. That's probably not going to kill him, but they'll get pretty close. Yeah, one. And yeah, he did manage to hit me once, but oh well. If only Sorn could get Flare in this game. In the uh, sequel to this game, Radiant Dawn, he can class up again into what's called an Arc Sage. And they come with the skill Flare, which will, um, whenever they attack it, will negate the enemy's resistance. And it will also give them back HP, depending on what they dealt. Kind of like Soul, a little bit. Except Soul doesn't negate defense. And I'm not worried about this guy at all. And even though Sorn looks outmatched here, you can probably get reinforcements to him if need be in one turn or two. There was one point while going back here that I got really close to actually uh, losing a character, Boyd. I nearly lost him in the first stage of this because he got hit by the Killing Edge dude that I told you to watch out for. Because for some reason I thought the reinforcements were soldiers, even though I knew they were Myrmidon, and so I left Boyd, Ike, and uh, Titania there, and I was like, oh wait, no, they're uh, Myrmidon, so I ended up trying to go after him, and then, of course, what happened, he got hit by the killing edge, and it did, I think, like, 27 damage, and he had 47 HP, so... And then another Myrmidon hit him and did 9, so... He actually almost died right there, so I was like, Mist is nowhere near him, I'll just use an elixir, I guess. Uh... This guy's got all fire. We'll go for him first. And we'll get rid of this guy. Yes, level up. Max out his already crazy resistance. I believe uh, his resistance, magic, and skill stop at a uh, level or not level, number like 26. It's a really strange number. It doesn't end like in a 5 or a 0 or anything you'd expect. We'll go with the Javelin because I'm probably going to have to be attacking that Sage and also those two archers down there. Oh, well, no, one archer. That was one of them right there. And the only other thing down here is another archer and a healer, but I don't even think the archer can reach me. No, he can't. And we'll get rid of this guy. And because of that ward, that will not do anything. Even if it had hit. That takes care of that guy. So in the meantime, send Boyd back there. I guess we'll probably send uh, 
Stefan back there as well. Yeah, all I have is a mend and a physic. I don't actually have a heal staff because I wanted to have the ward with me and then also restore in case I got hit by a venom weapon. Which I actually did uh, a couple times whenever going through the first part. But this is a really easy map. I mean, we're not even halfway done, and most of the enemies are already gone. A longbow, seriously? Things are so inaccurate. What's really funny is, like, if you ever do your history, like, actual history, not of this game, but in real life, longbows are really good weapons, like, in the actual wars. They're really accurate, and in this game, they can't hit anything. I mean, I've had longbows from as healers, Racin before, because you can use Racin later on in the game. They miss everything. Except for maybe, like, you know, not enemy units. Like, if you're using a longbow, or if, uh... You have, like, an other unit. Like, you know, with the yellow circle, like Mordecai and Leith in that one stage where Rolf and Mist first show up. I've actually had a longbow wielder critical somebody and kill them before that was an other unit. Which was just pathetic, of course. I mean, the guy he criticaled only had, like, 5 HP left, but, you know, regardless. Alright, let's go knock some heads. This is why I bought the pole axes right here. I'm sure Boyd could probably almost kill him in one hit, but... Eh, who cares. Titania can't quite kill him unless she does that. And Stefan has a long sword. Right there. And that'll actually use up the last used for it, but oh well. That's fine with me. I don't need it for anything else. Skill and speed. Would have liked luck. But oh well. And even though it doesn't matter, I'm going to use Ward on Ike. I would try to get all the way down here, I guess, if you need a healing item, because I believe this uh, healer over here has a men's staff that you'll get. Uh, we're going to find out here in a second. Not Oscar. Yeah, that one gives you a man staff. Uh, let's go ahead and kill him with Rolf. We'll use the iron bow, I guess. Well, actually, that won't quite kill him, but oh well. I gave cancel to Rolf, so I believe he has cancel and guard, maybe? No, he just has guard, okay. But yeah, that's the same thing as cancel in this game, so. Uh. This one's level 8, Leaf's level 8, and uh, we'll give it to Leaf, I guess. Okay. Yeah, this is a pretty easy map to clear. The reinforcements could sometimes mess you up, I guess, but really it's not that bad. And I don't mean mess you up as in, like you know, completely just gang up on you and destroy you, but you may not see them coming if you don't know that they're going to show up. That's the first thing you have to worry about while playing a Fire Emblem game if you haven't played it before. It's like, okay, where are the reinforcements going to show up? If you know where they show up, then it's actually really easy most of the time. We'll just kill this guy. More like overkill this guy, but whatever. Regardless, he's gone. And we'll use the Steel Axe. It's a little bit more accurate than the Pole Axe. Go down here and heal Oscar. Oh no, wait. Oh, I thought Soul like left one HP for him. I guess not. Oh well. We'll go ahead and get rid of this healer anyway. Something I like to do is like always have a couple of my units like right around here, and you'll see why at the end of the level. I don't know the exact position of where he'll show up, but it's it's kind of funny whenever you do it. It's just something stupid I think's funny, most likely. And we got a few more units over here, but nothing we can't handle. And we'll heal him after we take this guy. Can I one shot that guy, no problem. Take out the archer, no problem. Stefan, now you're just showing off. You really are. 
Oh wait, it's 12 1 in the morning. I guess I'm 17 now. That's cool. It should be appropriate that I turn 17 while making a Let's Play video. No, not Ward Mend. And definitely don't waste your physics staff, you crazy fool. Mist is almost classed up. I don't think she's going to class up in this part of the next, though. Like, in this stage. You can't award bonus experience in between levels. If you could, I would probably have Mist just class up, though. I'm just taking a random guess at where it'll be. No, I'm not trying to find, like, a hidden item or anything like that, so don't worry about that. Because that's not what I'm looking for. That guy. Yeah, this is a very, very easy map, if you couldn't tell. Very easy. Uh, we'll go for this guy, because we can kill him in one hit. Most likely because he had a javelin. Actually, it's probably just because he had lower HP, but oh well. Alright, got some resistance, that's good. I never gave that talisman to him, but oh well. I was kind of hoping for a crit right there so he wouldn't take damage, but oh well. Mist was going to heal him anyway, even if he hadn't gotten hit for that one health, which he probably got from the level up. Maybe not, but who knows. I guess we could heal Boyd now too, if we have the time, because he got an HP bonus from that level up. Something weird on the like at the very beginning of when I was started this file up is like I think it was the first ch not the prologue I'm not counting that as a chapter but the second or third fight that I went to when I got a level up he got plus two in HP I'm like that's strange I've never seen him do that before it was just something kind of weird but oh well not that I was complaining it just seemed kind of weird to me no I just missed I was gonna have Oliver be surrounded right there but oh well uh and so he retreats and says, leave them, uh, Leanne, and he's going to just try to find Rayson, which is a big mistake, because honestly, Rayson is probably the harder of the two to get than Leanne. You'll be able to use Leanne and Rayson in Radiant Dawn, and uh, Rayson is definitely the better of the two. And here, once again, it says, oh, wait, no, not yet. It says, she's unbelievably light, I barely know she's there. That's why I always thought it was funny that it cut his speed and skill into half, essentially. And this is always funny, if you have Boyd and Mist in your uh, party whenever you're talking about this, they'll say, well, I'm surprised. I'll bet you are. What are you grinning about, Boyd? Oh, nothing. I'm just amazed. Did you know you're two times heavier than she is? Dude, Boyd, you're like ten times heavier than she is, most likely. I'm glad I don't have to carry you around. It'd be like wearing an extra suit of armor. You pig, you're the worst. <laughs> and then use the smite on her. Or you on him. Gah! what you get for being an idiot, Boyd. Silly Boyd. You've lost your mind. And so, Rayson has made it to the altar that he's trying to go to, and it looks like Tabar and Janeth and Ulki have found Rayson. And then Tabarn manages to talk him out of using the uh, cursed magic, essentially. Eve, my infant sister Leanne, all killed. Well, not all of them. So they eventually say the humans will pay, but we have to think of a different strategy. Running out of soldiers, Oliver? Yeah, I know, that's exactly what I was thinking, Ike. Oh, please. And you notice this time, Oliver actually stays on the map, so this is the last stage of this four-part craziness. So let's get started. 
Okay, so. Just so you know, there will be reinforcements here. There will be all bow paladins. So I guess if you want to leave Rolf behind, then you can just let the, uh, him take care of them. Also, watch out for this guy, because he's got Meteor, and as you can see, it can cover a pretty decent amount of what we got to trek through. So, yeah. I'm actually going to leave that on, so I can see what I'm doing here. There's the Night Killer on this guy. I mean, you're going to have to run through it. Just, you know, be aware that that guy's there. Forget about him thinking, okay, I'll still have like 5 or 6 HP left after this attack. You may not, because that guy might try to kill you. And that would not be good. Yeah, no, giving a killing edge to a Swordmaster is very much overkill. It'll be His critical will be essentially over 50%, so more than half the time he'll get a critical. Which, for... Fire Emblem standards, getting a critical over 50% of the time is ridiculous. This is a great level to have a physics staff, though, because, you know, now if one of the uh, meteor attacks actually does hit you, because I've gotten hit with, uh, I've actually accidentally let Boyd get hit before by it, because Boyd does not seem to be very good at dodging the attack for some reason. And Ike will not with his speed cut in half, either. Ike will get hit by pretty much everything that tries to attack him. Except for maybe, like, axe users. Because, you know, they tend to be the least accurate of all of them, but, you know, still. You'd have to be fairly careful here. Fortunately, Ike does have 40 HP, so he can take a little bit of a beating, because it's not his, his defense doesn't get decreased by carrying Leanne at all, so his defense is just fine. So if I guess if you use the Ward Staff on Ike and a Mage Attacks, and he's probably going to take minimal to no damage. Hopefully I kept that hammer. I don't think I did, though. There are a few knights there. One of them's a general, but if I didn't keep it, then oh well. Boyd will do just fine, I guess. Stefan, you really need to quit showing off, man. Do it when it's necessary only. And yep, he went for Boyd. Though I figured he probably would. And yeah, he didn't get him. Yeah, that's generally about the amount he'll do. is about 14-ish. No more than 20, but no less than 10. And I know he's only two squares away, but I do want him to attack this turn. Uh, I could let Rolf handle it, but I'm not going to, because Rolf's not going to be on the very front line, so... He'll be close, but somebody there will be in front of him. Boyd, Leith, Oscar, etc. Go ahead and get rid of this guy, though. Because I don't like him. He tried to hurt Rolf. And for that, he will pay. And we get rid of the Bow Paladin, because he's not a threat at all. But he is in the way, so we need to get out of the way. Pull axe and get rid of this guy in one hit. Even if we don't have that hammer, which I didn't bother to check there a second ago. Uh, no, I don't have it anymore, but I can always use Soren and that will become no problem at all. I'm probably advancing through this a little bit too quickly. If this is your first time playing, you probably don't want to run through it this quickly. It's just that I played through this game. Uh, I've already talked... Actually, no, I haven't talked about this because that was in the failed recording, so... Um, whenever you beat the game, you can get unlock trial maps. You unlock them depending on, like, what difficulty you beat it on, easy, normal, hard. And I've unlocked those three maps because I've beaten it on all three difficulties. But you can also unlock characters, and the reason that I bring this up, not only to mention it, because Oliver is one of the characters you can unlock. He's essentially useless, as we'll see his stats later on. But you unlock him after you beat the game once, and you can unlock... Uh, every single character up to the very end, including the final boss, if you beat the game up to 15 times. And I've beaten the game, I believe, 10 or 11 times, so... I've got plenty of experience with this game. Maybe not the sequel as much, but I've beaten the sequel at least 7 times. I'm not making that up. I've beaten the sequel a very high amount of times as well. I'm a huge fan of both of these games. Not that there's anything wrong with the Game Boy Advance games. I love Sacred Stones and Fire Emblem 7 as well which is just called Fire Emblem here in the U.S. This is actually Fire Emblem, I believe, 9. Because Fire Emblem 7 is just the regular one for the GBA. The Sacred Stones is also known as Fire Emblem 8. This one is 9, and Radiant Dawn is 10. 
I could be wrong. There's somebody out there who knows a lot more about it than me. I don't really try to learn each individual thing of history about a video game. I usually just try to learn the interesting stuff or stuff I find interesting anyway. And then, you know, just a little bit about it. I don't go crazy with it. That's just not me. Let's see if this will help you, Boyd. Mist is actually getting very close to her class change. I don't think she's going to get it, though. I mean, she might, but I don't think she will. Actually, no, let's not do that first. Let's uh, take care of this guy. Despite the fact he's a general, he's still not extremely high-powered. Even though he's a general, I think he's like level 1 or 2, so he's barely a general. So any of your mages slash sages, a decent archer, any axe user, anything like armor slayer or hammer, anything that's good against knights can probably take him out in one or two hits. Or one or two rounds, maybe. Now the trick with this one is you gotta, kinda have to be careful on how far you advance and you wanna advance quickly all at once because once you reach a, reach a certain point around this area right here, you're going to have other units and they're going to start showing up and hogging the experience and you don't want them to do that, so... I'm trying to prevent that from happening. I do need to send Rolf back to take care of the reinforcements that are going to show up, though. Hopefully I didn't f advance too far forward. Yeah, he went for Leaf that time. Either A, because Leaf could take bonus damage from it, or Boyd's resistance got high enough to where he figured that that wasn't the best person he should go for. And I'm sure uh, Stefan could have probably killed that Pegasus without getting a critical in one hit. Those things are too fragile, that's why I don't like them. Ah, no, they showed up anyway. Ah, well. well that's too bad. And then Rayson says, the forest is whispering something. What is it? What are you trying to tell me? And then they realize that another heron is being carried on Ike's back, and so they're going to help us out. Now, you don't have to worry about racing being killed, despite the fact if you go look at their stats, he's extremely frail. Don't worry about it at all, because they'll do a really good job of protecting him. Tabarn is a hawk king, so he will always stay transformed, and pretty much anything he attacks is going to die in one hit. At least at this point. Maybe later on, not in one hit, but, you know, two hits. Jennifer and Uki aren't as strong, but they're still pretty good. I'm not a fan of them personally, but there's nothing wrong with using them. Okay, so we'll go back this way. Go ahead and heal up Rolf before he goes and takes care of the reinforcements that will show up. I might end the map before they can show up, but who knows. All you have to do is just defeat the boss, which is Oliver, and we'll see his stats here in a second. Uh, we'll just switch to the Steel Axe. I don't like the pull axe, it's not very accurate. I'm gonna kill this guy with the meteor though, because he's starting to bug me. And once you're using a range spell like Meteor or Blizzard, which is the wind one, or Bolting, which is the thunder one, you actually can uh, get attacked by anything, whether it's ranged or not. Because um, ranged tomes like those are only allowed to attack from 3 to 10 squares away, so you can't attack from 1 or 2 squares away if you're using it. So you need to make note of that if you're going to use, have somebody use Blizzard or Bolting or whatever. Then just keep aware that you may want to protect them a little bit more than you would if they just had like Elwind or something like that. Now usually Tabarn won't try to kill the boss, but he might, and you don't want to pog in the experience, especially from the boss. It's not that big a deal if he attacks like a Pegasus Knight or anything like that, because that's not too much experience. But the boss, as we already know, gives you more experience than the regular enemy, so... You do want to watch out for that. Now, these guys actually can hurt to barn, but if they do, it's not going to be very much. Even though Uki hasn't transformed, he's still not going to do much damage. Of Uki, Tabarn, and Janef, actually the one with the lowest defense, I believe, is Janef. Uh, that's the way it is in Radiant Dawn, so it probably is here as well. Janef is more attack-based, and Uki is more defense-based. And he's not going to be able to kill that Halberdier in this round, so... It's actually good, because I don't want him to. And there are those reinforcements. Something about the reinforcements, though, is this guy up here actually has a Steel Axe, but I wouldn't worry about it. 
we already know that steel axes are extremely inaccurate, so if Rolf does get attacked by that guy, he's probably going to miss. And as we've seen from this first guy, at least, that he wouldn't have done any damage if he had hit Rolf, so I'm going to guess these other two guys probably won't either. And if the uh, Paladin does, then probably won't do much. Is there any other character that could, uh... Yeah, okay. First, we're going to kill this Halberdier, because he's in the way of Oliver. I could use range, but I don't want to. And I don't care that she leveled up. She got a decent level up, though. I mean, she didn't really need magic, but oh well. But if we look at all of her stats, I mean, these are terrible. Look at this. Ten defense. Ten. That's it. That's terrible. I mean, magic users, the only thing he's really got going for him here is luck and resistance. That's about it. Maybe a little bit of skill, but not really that much. I mean, he's a level 2 bishop, which is his class stat version. Soren's level 8. Look at the, his stats compared to that. I mean, sure, he's got better defense than Soren, but still, every other thing he's pretty much beaten on. Maybe strength, I don't know. But, you know, any type of mage is known for not having good defense regardless, so... Really, having a uh, final boss be a magic user with poor defense is probably the second easiest boss to get rid of. The first easiest would be an archer or a bow pilot or anything like that, because you could just go up to him with a sword, and they can't counterattack. Like Norris on the uh, pirate level, if you remember that one. I uh, don't think we can reach all of them. Maybe we can with Leith? But Leith could probably kill him. Yep, easily. The thing about his weapon, though, Nosferatu, is it will actually, if it does damage, you'll get back the HP that you did. So, uh, I think it said 5 damage to Leith, so he would get that 5 health back, but I'm not that worried about it. Just more focused on getting experience right now. I didn't, didn't really necessarily care who killed Oliver, just as long as it was somebody. Oh, wait, I forgot about Soren. Uh, well, we can kill this other, uh, Halberdier, I guess. Since he got a depth, there will be no short spear from him. And the critical. And we got an adept, so do try to kill that guy. I don't know. This guy doesn't drop a mend. So, yeah, if you can kill that Halberdier, then try to do that. I didn't realize he dropped an adept, because I usually don't go for the Halberdier on the left there. I usually go for the one on the right. I will enjoy this fat man. Leith has my favorite line right there. I will enjoy this fat man. There you go. See? But it doesn't matter, because Leith's going to kill him anyway, so... Now, that could be really good if he had a really good light magic user, but... There's also a sword later on that'll actually do that. It's called the Rune Sword, but we'll see that much later. Interestingly enough, that did not actually kill Oliver. Like, you know, actually kill, kill him. He will show up in the sequel of the, uh, which is Radiant Dawn. You can actually recruit him in Radiant Dawn. He's only available on the trial maps in this game, but... Oh, well. So, let's see. It says... Uh, Rayson says, Leanne! Rayson, my brother? Is that real? Uh, yeah, brother! Brother! Is it really you, Leanne? This is no dream? And then how is it possible? How'd you survive? And then Tabarn shows up. Leanne, do you know who I am? Tabarn? Of the Hawk Tribe, yes. You remember my name? Have you been here by yourself for all these years? I don't know. That night, my sisters took me and hid me in the small shrine. I'm sure they sounded Galder to me, and then I became so sleepy. Said the forest protected her. And then thank you with all that I am, th I thank you. And then for this scene right here, there won't be any more of that, so. What do you need? The herons? And they actually mentioned that Sanaki wants to protect the herons, which is an interesting tale, because obviously the herons were blamed for the assassination of the last empress, but she doesn't believe that, fortunately, and she's trying to atone for the crimes of people. So they don't believe it, but then Ike says, of course, you could just speak with the apostle yourself, because she's at the forest's edge, and so we meet them there. And then she runs forward and falls on her face. Well, not on her face, you know what I mean. But essentially she just apologizes like crazy. 
And then Sigrun's like, what are you doing? You can't bend your knee to another. And as she's apologizing, Le Leanne says, that is enough. And he says, Leanne, please rise, Apostle Sanaki. And she says, it is enough. It was not your fault. Leanne. Brother, it is enough, is it not? Forgive this child. Her apology is so sincere. And then says, Leanne, you cannot ask me to forgive them. You are asleep. You don't know what these humans did to us. I do know. The forest told me everything. You know? Everyone is gone, aren't they? That's right. Everyone is gone. That is why I cannot release my hatred. Brother. My loving brother. Grayson. The pain and sadness is in you, brother. It clouds your very soul. To see you like this, to watch you, it hurts me. Please, do not lose yourself to hate. Leanne, my sister. I understand if that is how you feel. And that's it for all that. There's a little bit in uh, chapter 18 and chapter 22, 25. There's quite a bit. Some stuff in 28 and some stuff at the very end in epilogue as well, but... I will try to keep this up as much as I can. There was that one part in chapter 15 whenever Nassal and Rayson are talking where it was talking about the sacred trees and all that, but I didn't think about it back then. But I knew Leanne was going to show up, so that's why I brought this up. So, now that we have actually have two herons, not in our party or anything like that, but now that two, we have proven that two herons are alive, what they're actually going to do is be able to restore the forest. And I'm going to try not to talk too much over... Actually, I'm going to try to talk over this cutscene, because even though it's cool, the dialogue's not important, really. But uh, herons actually have a ability called Galder. I don't know if they've talked about this too much yet, but Galders do different things. They, um, If you've played previous games, it's kind of like Nils' ability in um, Fire Emblem 7 to... You'll have stuff like Vigor, where after a, a unit is moved, you'll know how it turns gray you can actually let them take another turn to heal again, attack again, move again, etc. There's also, like, Bless, or maybe Bliss, I don't know which one, and that'll restore your biorhythm to the max point, etc. What they're singing right now is actually gold as well. It'll mention this here in a second, I think. Mist, isn't that Mother's song? Not quite. What they're actually singing is a Galdor, like I said, though. It's called the Galdor Rebirth. It's mentioned, I think, in the sequel. I don't think again here, but... I love this music right here. It sounds like kind of like Wind Waker-esque, almost. Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. But I get goosebumps every time I watch this thing. Ta-da! Now, like I said, there is a third harem, but it won't be shown in this game. It's shown in the sequel. I will be doing that eventually, but for now, these are the only two herons. You'll only be able to use one in battle. He'll show up later on, which obviously would mean it's racing. Just so happy. Nice Nintendo Capri Sun reference right there. And so Nasir says... That this might be enough to bridge the gap between Bjork and Laguz. And once again, Soren's acting all depressed and strange. Oh, don't worry, Titania. He's got a really, really good reason. Trust me. And I'm not saying that just because I think Soren is awesome. I mean, we all know Soren's awesome, but... He actually does have a good reason. Soren's a smart kid. I mean, for crying out loud. He hasn't failed us yet. But hopefully you'll continue to watch, because we're going to be seeing Ike get his class up here in the scene, I believe. So now, essentially what it says right here is, uh, Benyam will offer their support and help Kremia get back their homeland from Dayan. 
and also that they can join forces and essentially fix everything, or at least as best they can. Hold, I am most definitely not through with you. And so, apparently, I can need a more appropriate title, because it would affect the troops and uh, so on and so forth, etc., etc. And so, she knights him and gives him peerage, and, in the name of House Crimea, grants you the title and rank of lord and all the honors it conveys. And so, Ike is now a lord. I know, it sounds like a strange class up, but you have go from, like, fighter to warrior, and it, it makes sense, but, like, from ranger to lord? It sounds kind of weird, but whatever. Alright. Now we'll actually be able to use Ike again. That'll be cool can also learn a skill called Ether, which we're also going to see in this video. Normally I don't do my preparations, but I do want to show off Ether. And you'll notice this time, since Ike is a main character, it actually changes his picture. Like other characters, that never happened before. Like Soren, for example, or Oscar. But since Ike's the main character, it actually does matter here, so... That's pretty cool. So then it talks about how Serenus Forest used to belong to the bird tribes, and then it ended up getting burned in that massacre. I don't know if it shows up at the end of this game or the sequel, but it's not really that big a spoiler. Is eventually the um, the Herons will get the Serenus Forest back, and it essentially goes to them, but also to the Hawk Tribe as well, because the Hawk Tribes are pretty much the ones that look over uh, or look after Leanne and uh, Grayson. The um, Killless Crows do a little bit with Raisin, kind of like, you know, Raisin's and Nasala's friendship and Neoluchi and all that, but mostly it's the Hawks. Because, you know, they're more trustworthy. So now what we're going to be doing, instead of actually going directly straight to Crimea, what we're going to be doing is invading Dayan and then going through Dayan to back to Crimea. So the capital of Dayan is actually our next destination. So, Chapter 18, Crimea Marches. Which we're not going to start in this episode, don't worry about that. But I do want to show off that whole ether thing, so... Right now, what they're going to talk about is how they plan to cut across Dan. And Gawain's son is just a boy, not yet worthy of his father's name. People seem to watch him, though. He's gained the trust of the Serenus survivors and King Phoenixes. The Herons are alive. The two members of the royal family survived, so... Astern says, uh, bring one of them to me, I care not which one, and I want the medallion as well, as you wish. What could they be talking about? Who knows? So once we cross the wall, we'll be in day end. There are Wyvern Riders. They won't be happy to see us. They also apparently tell you that Wyvern Riders are really gigantic threats. Even though they're not that bad, they're a lot less frail than the Pegasus Knights. But they are still weak to arrows, and fairly weak to magic. They don't seem to get very good resistance upgrades. So for the most part, they're really not that bad. I don't know why the game tries to make them sound like some huge threat. They're not terrible. But anyway, now that Ike is actually a lord, what you can do is, if you kept an occult scroll, like I told you to, you can go to manage skills, and Ike can actually learn this move right here called the Aether, which this does is it triggers both Soul and Luna consecutively. Now we've already seen Soul, what that does is it takes HP away from your opponent, and if you need to be healed any, it will give that to you. Luna essentially just negates defense, so this is actually a very, very helpful skill to have. And it's pretty much essential if you want to beat a certain boss later on in the game, so definitely assign that to Ike. He's only going to be allowed to have, like, five more other things, so if you have to remove something, you will. You know, sorry about that. But I do keep Miracle on Ike all the time, so Miracle and Aether is what he gets throughout the rest of this game. We also have Adept here, so I'm going to go ahead and try to assign that to somebody. We'll give it to Rolf, because he's awesome. But anyway, next time on Let's Play, Fire Emblem Path Radiance, I'm not going to go over the info or anything just yet, because this video is already how long now? Almost 50 minutes. So next time on Let's Play, Fire Emblem Path Radiance, we'll tackle Chapter 18, Crimea Marches, which I'll probably record right after this, because I am really in a Fire Emblem mood now. And we'll be back on my other file. So, see you guys then. Later.